into the larger things you've been teaching, sharing the boxes it ticks, and your thoughts on the on the economic shutdown and 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 where that could go. Well, it's not about where it could go. Where it would go is worse than it is now. But where it is now, the world will never be the same again. And how many how many suicides do they think there's going to be? Yeah. With people who have um, seen no point in, in continuing because everything they've worked for is gone. Eh? And who do you think's going to uh, start um, uh, sucking up uh, the uh, the property and the resources where people Better are taking repair. out loans uh, for their businesses, which they can't repay? Who's going to get their property and their business and their resources now? The banks that are owned by the cult. And it's about time people bloody woke up because I'm getting sick of um, uh, year after year pointing out that this was coming. It's come. And even then, although lots of people have woke up because of it, but even then, there's people that, that, that refuse to see it. It's unbelievable. They have no capacity for free thought. They've made that choice. They should make another and fast. And of course, Trump, Trump as a human being, uh, as a president um, with his own agenda, not that I'm a Trump supporter, say the least. He's owned by Israel for a start. But he doesn't want this because what's going what's to happen? Or, or the whole economy has gone. I mean, where do you start? If he, if he gets a second term, all of that second term is going to be responding to this. We have a guy, prime minister in Britain, uh, Boris Johnson. It's very clear he didn't want to introduce this. But this is how it works. I'll give you the British example, and this is what's happening in every country. We have an organization here um, called Imperial College. And Imperial College have advised the American government as they've advised the British government and other governments. Um, and um, Imperial College is a very, very uh, big um, uh, Freemasonic connected organization in London with a grotesque history of using computer models to make projections that turn out to be solid gold wrong. There's a list of them. This is where uh, things like um, the ice caps would be, have been gone years ago, according to these models, under this hoax of human-caused global warming, which has been perpetrated by the same people. And what the hoax of global warming is demanding as a solution to the problem is exactly what's being demanded as a result of this COVID-19 hoax, which is a transformation of the world economic system where the tiny few will have more power than ever before. A digital system, cash gone. What's one of the things that is, uh, is, is disappearing as a result of this COVID-19? Cash. Yeah, the reason it's disappearing is because I'm getting it all out of my bank. <laughs> you look you look at my books from the early 1990s. I was saying one of the agendas is to get rid of cash, delete it, and have a one world single digital currency, which this cult would control. And as a result, oh, no, you can catch the virus from, uh, from cash. I mean, it, virologists are saying that's bloody nonsense. So, oh, no, 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 we must use the card, cash disappearing F faster than ever before as, as, a, um, as a result of all this. But anyway, Imperial College, a bloke called Neil Ferguson, he's a professor. God help us. Um, he produced a, uh, oh, a computer model. Oh, I've worked it out. Now, what is a computer model? It gives you out as a result uh, what is based on the data you put in. So if you want an out you got to control the in. Very simple. And if someone had have come along advising the government on this virus, alleged, um, and they said, well, I've had a computer model, and um, it, it says it's not a really a big problem. How, how long do you think they'd have been advising the government? Like another 25 seconds, maybe? So this Neil Ferguson comes along, and he says, actually, my computer models say that up to half a million British people could die from this virus. Well over a million. There's one figure I saw, 2.2 million could die in America as a result of this virus. He's now reeled it all back to less than 20,000. But what happened? Um, 
Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, hears this. He doesn't want to crash the economy. So he's got to spend the rest of his time in office um, dealing with it. But he's told that between a quarter and half a million British people could die from this virus. So he introduces the lockdown and um, destroys the economy. And the figures were clearly nonsensical. But they were so high to justify the lockdown. And then once the lockdown happened, he starts reeling them back. And, and people like Trump will be faced with something similar. He'll have the dark suits and the computer modelers turning out the result the dark suits won, the deep state. And they'll say, Mr. President, just as they said, Mr. Prime Minister, this is how many people are going to die if you don't lock the country down. And if you don't, and they do, you are going to be blamed. What are they going to do? Almost everybody would lock the country down. And as a result of that, we have um, well over half the world population now, billions and billions of people who are under house arrest, in effect. They have um, no income. The businesses that have spent years, much of their lives, many of them, have been destroyed. They'll never reopen. And, and the great corporations of the cult, like Amazon, will end this with a vastly increased market share, even more, even compared with what they had before. Uh, we now have set the precedent that when there's a, quote, virus pandemic, which they can create any time they bloody like, they don't even need a virus, this is the way to deal with it. And you're going to see these lockdowns and lockdowns. Something else you're going to see. You're going to see the introduction of a vaccine with enormous pressure to make it compulsory. And involved at the very epicenter of that is Bill Gates, another psychopath. Bill Gates is absolutely at the heart of this. First of all, he wants to um, vaccinate the world. Anything that moves, stick a needle into it. He is um, massively funding, in fact, owns an organization called Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, which is developing and was before this happened, an electronic tagging called a quantum tattoo to tag everyone who's been vaccinated so that they can see who has and who hasn't. Um, six weeks before this virus came to public alleged virus came to public attention. Bill Gates, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the World Economic Forum, massively connected to Gates and a major, if not the major, global 1% organization. John Hop Johns Hopkins um, University, or the medical area of that, and Johnson & Johnson and others, they ran a simulation six weeks before this happened, of a pandemic of a coronavirus and how the world would respond. Exactly um, what the simulation ran is how the world has responded. And we have the Johns Hopkins organization involved in that that's now collating all the figures for COVID-19 deaths, brackets not. Johnson & Johnson is right up there they say, to bring out a vaccine. Other companies that are researching a vaccine, they say, I say the vaccine existed before the thing broke out, are all uh, funded, a great chunk of them anyway, are funded by Bill Gates. And the world policy on this corona hoax is being run by the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization was created by the Rockefeller family. And um, the second biggest funder of the World Health Organization, second only to the government of the United States, is Bill Gates. And the guy who's at, at the, the, the front of it now, the director general, a guy called Tedros, member of the uh, human rights destroying um, Marxist government in Ethiopia, 
former health minister there who was exposed three times for covering up cholera epidemics. He's now head of the World Health Organization. On the say-so, overwhelmingly, of Bill Gates. Why? Because he'll do whatever he's told. This is what's happening. And people need to wake up to it. Fast. Well, they still have something to wake up to. I'm sorry, but the idea that the multi, 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 multi billionaire Bill Gates, whose father was a supporter of eugenics, um, ha could give a damn about the health of the world is naivety taken to a level that is almost impossible to comprehend. Um, Bill Gates said that he was inspired to start the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation by the Rockefeller Foundation. And there's evidence that actually Gates, if you go back far enough, is a Rockefeller. Well, I was sent a, a document, a Rockefeller Foundation document from 2010, which was um, running a scenario of a influenza pandemic globally and how the world would respond. And it's word for word how the world has responded. So, um, you know, I, 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 you know, for most of the last 30 years, I've, I've been um, I've been able to, you know, say to myself, well, people aren't getting it because. You know, we're, we're talking about a plan, we're talking about something that's happening under the radar. So, I, you know, I, I understand that they they um, they won't go there. But when it's stark staring in your bloody face and you still won't go there. Well, that is shocking. And, um, you know, we are consciousness. We are potentially infinite awareness if we open our minds to it. But much of the human race has simply allowed itself to coagulate into little more than a software program where you press enter and you get exactly the um, response that you knew you were going to get because it's a software program. Uh, if I put data into this computer, it doesn't uh, process it and think, well, you know, what do I make of it? it? When I press enter, it just processes it. And the reason that these simulations and scenarios can be so accurate in the way that humans respond is because of that. They understand human psychology. The whole of this global conspiracy is based on human psychology, understanding that if you do A, humanity will respond with B. And um, so, you know, I, you know, you give up on some people because there's no point. You're just wasting your energy. But what's great is that with every one of these things, and massively with this, more and more people become aware enough to say, hold on a minute, there's something going on here, and it's, it, it, I don't feel good about it. And this is going to wake a lot of people up. This it already has. Um, and the fact that it's waking so many people up, and others still sit there being told what to do, by mummy and daddy state is it's just breathtaking, really. Um, and there's um, an, another um, another area I quickly want to mention. One of the things that I've said over the years, let me just describe the structure of society that I'm saying that this cult wants where, where it wants to go. Um, and I, I've been saying this for decades. Right. So yeah. uh, uh, put, put, put that in the put that in the background uh, um, as I describe it. Um, I've described this um, wannabe global structure as the Hunger Games Society. And if people picture a pyramid, at the top of the pyramid, there's the 1%, this tiny, tiny elite with all the resources, all the control, all the wealth. Um, and at the bottom of the pyramid is basically the rest of humanity in servitude deprivation and dependency upon the cult. Remember again, I've been saying this for decades and writing it in my books, not coming up with it now. Right. And between the 
and the rest of the population is planned to be a vicious military police state to impose the will of the 1% upon the rest of the population and to stop the population challenging the 1%. And you'll see if anyone's watched the Hunger Games trilogy, why I've called it the Hunger Games Society. Now, this, um, this virus hoax has created that society to a massive extent, massive movement towards it in literally days, two weeks, three weeks, maybe. And again, if people think that's a coincidence, Naivety Anonymous Life Membership. And, and the point being um, that this pyramid, this Hunger Games society, is designed to be controlled by artificial intelligence. This is what all the smart technology is about, the smart grid, the global smart grid. This is what 5G is about. They have to have 5G level of communication um, for this um, AI global grid to, um, to function. And psychopaths like Elon Musk will absolutely know that. So will psychopaths like Bill Gates. Um, and so um, it's not even a fascistic state, although it is experienced like that. It's not a communist state, though it is experienced like that. It's a technocratic state, a technocracy. And a technocracy is defined as a society that is not run by um, elected people. That's all gone. They want that gone but run by technocrats, dark suits, bureaucrats, um, scientists, engineers, etc., to run the system using um, AI. And this combination now, as again, all this is in my books years and years and years back, this combination now of more and more jobs being taken by AI, we haven't seen nothing yet. And this Armageddon of unemployment around the world as a result of this hoax has created a situation where the population has no, has no income. And something I've been writing about for years is that what was meant to happen is now happening in this Hunger Games society is that the population is given a, quote, guaranteed income, which is a pittance, um, by, the, by, the, by the, the state, the 1%, the technocracy. But in the Hunger Games society, it comes at a price, even that pittance. You'll only get it if you behave the way we say you should behave. And if you don't, you won't. And by the way, if you say, well, stuff it then, um, are you going to earn a living? No jobs. And another thing I've been saying for decades is that the blueprint for this global Hunger Games society is China. See, China has um, lived in a uh, vicious dictatorship and it's not had to even start to pay lip service to the illusion of freedom and democracy. So instead of having to manipulate and um, put, put this society into place uh, in, um, over a period. China has just said, this is what's happening. This is what's, what's what we're doing. So China's a technocracy now. Chinese cities have millions of um, face recognition cameras and people are tracked in real time 24 seven. They can find them in minutes anywhere. I've seen documentaries where they've tested the system, put someone out on the street, found him in minutes. And they run this um, system in China called the social credit system. And what this means is as you are tracked by AI and your behavior recorded and registered, you get social credits for behaving the way the system wants and you get social credits taken away for doing the other. 
And once you get to a certain level of losing credits, then consequences kick in. And as I said in my last book, um, millions, many millions of Chinese as a result of this have been banned from flying and even banned from trains. Now, this guaranteed income is designed to work in exactly the same way. Um, and what, it, what they've now started to do, of course, is hand pittance money out to the people because th this this two trillion bailout, you don't think that's going to go to the to the people of America, do you? It's going to go to the freaking corporations and the cult corporations, like the like it all did after the um, 1990, um, 1990 uh, sorry, two thousand and eight. Same bloody thing, you know. There's a there's an organization in America, very very um, largely funded, massively funded, called the. Um, Anti-Defamation League, the uh, ADL, which is a, a, an Israeli organization that um, uses the, um, the, the label of anti-Semitism to stop uh, any legitimate criticism of Israel. Um, the leader, the head of the ADL has actually come out and said they should have bailout money as a result of this. So it, the people ain't going to get it. They'll get a pittance. And, but it's starting the precedent for the all many, many strings attached, pittance um, guaranteed income, so long as you do what you're told. Yeah, um, I think that's one of the parts that many, many, many weeks ago, I said to my wife that what's going to happen is <laughs> they're going to give most of the money away to corporations, corporate income will go down, corporate earnings will go down, but the stocks will eventually go back up. You know, uh, I think like 500 billion is to recapitalize the Fed, you know, and since they're a bank, they can turn that 500 billion into a lot more than that. And in addition to that, I said, look, they're probably going to announce a digital currency. And yeah, that have. was in the first round of the stimulus, right? In America, that yeah. was the first round of the stimulus. And, you know, then this, you know, uh, money to people, $1,200, which... Well, that's going to go a long way, isn't it? last people four weeks. I mean, That's going to go a long it's, way. It's, that's what I mean by the picture. Yeah, it's sad to me because, you know, uh, thankfully, I'm, I'm in at least a, a lot better financial position than a lot of other people. But $1,200 is not going to help anybody. And then you see Nancy Pelosi already saying, we need another round of stimulus already. Well, the last one just happened. And it's very likely that when this is all said and done, the um, national debt is going to be uh, greater substantially than the GDP. And we're, we're in, in the amount of money that is printed is going to be substantially greater. And yeah, you know, that's something that uh, frightens me as well, that I think most people don't realize the economic ramifications of doing something like that, because it all it does is create a larger bubble in the bond market in the U.S. dollar. And, and I was hoping you could talk a little bit about um, why is it that they even want a digital currency in the first place? Because this is something that, as I told you before, we went in air when I was 19 and, you know, I, I and I 28 now, so almost 10 years ago. I heard you talk about a lot of these things. And so that was how I was able. And I told my mom the same thing. I said, mom, this is going to collapse the economy and they're going to insert, insert a, a digital currency. And it was in the first round of the stimulus. Yeah. Why do they want that? And can you talk a little bit more about sure. the, that macro view? Sure. Um, you go into a store and you hand over, uh, digital money, credit card. And the uh, person in the store says, uh, I'm sorry, what's except your card? Well, up to this point, you've been able to pay cash. Oh, I'll pay cash then. What, what happens when there's no cash? And the computer says no to your card or your microchip as it's meant to be, eventually. Um, you have no way of purchasing. No way. Um, uh, sh how can you... Um, be involved in any commerce. The only alternative to the digital currency, which is all computerized and therefore people can be shut out from it any time, is barter. 
And what they uh, will do is they'll say, um, we're banning barter because you can't tax it. Uh, and there'll be a lot of barter going on as a result of this, this crash. They'll have to be. Uh, and uh, so it's all about control. That, it's simple, simply control, all about control. Uh, and uh, the digital currency has been planned a very, very long time. See, when in the European Union they introduced the euro, I, I pointed out then this is a stepping stone to the one world digital currency. It got rid of the franc and the lira um, and the um, other European countries, uh, currencies rather, uh, and fused it into uh, just one currency. And that was just a, that was just the what I call the totalitarian tiptoe to this one world currency, which can be controlled at a, at a central point. And, and this is the point. When everything is controlled via AI, everything is digital and electrical. The world can literally be controlled from a central point that's controlling that grid. Literally. You can um, control the world from an underground base or inside a mountain, of which there are many bases inside mountains in America alone, um, once you have this system in place. You know, you don't even have to be out there. So uh, how do we stop this? How do we stop this? Uh, uh, well, well, who's controlling it? Well, we don't know where they are. It's, you know, and it's been creeping up and creeping up and creeping up. And I've been pointing it out year after year, month after month, to the sound often, especially in the earlier days, to um, enormous buffooning laughter. And here we are sitting, uh, facing that very society so rapidly um, unfolding.